what would you do if it, it seemed like in a matter of months that there is some non-zero probability, maybe a high probability that there would be a collision? So from a scientific perspective, from an engineering perspective, I imagine you would actually be in the room of people deciding what to do. What, uh, yeah. philosophically too. It's a tough one, right? Because if you only have a few months, that's not much time in which to deflect it. Early detection and, and um, early action are key. Because when it's far away, you only have to deflect it by a tiny little angle. Yeah. And then by the time it reaches us, the perpendicular motion is big enough to, you know, to, to miss Earth. All you need is one radius or, or one diameter of the Earth, right? Um, that actually means that all you would need to do is slow it down so it arrives four minutes later or speed it up so it arrives four minutes earlier and Earth will have moved through one radius in, in that time. So it doesn't take much. But you can imagine if a thing is about to hit you, you, you have to deflect it 90 degrees yep. or more, right? Yep. You know, and you don't have much time to do so and you have to slow it down or speed it up a lot if that's what you're trying to do to it. And so decades is sufficient time, but months is not sufficient time. So at that point, I would think the, the name of the game would be to try to predict where it would hit. And if it's in a heavily populated region, try to try to start an orderly evacuation perhaps. <laughs> But, you know, that might <laughs> cause just so much panic that I'm, yeah. I mean, how would you do it with New York City or, or Los Angeles uh, or something like that, right? I, I might have I might have a different opinion a year ago. I'm uh, a bit uh, disheartened by, you know, in the movies, the uh, there's always extreme competence from the government. <laughs> competence, yeah. Uh, competence, but, Right, yeah. but we expect extreme incompetence, uh, if anything, right? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> So I'm quite uh, disappointed, but sort of from a medical perspective, I think you're saying there, and a scientific one, it's almost better to get better and better, maybe telescopes and data collection to be able to predict the movement of these things, or like come up with totally new technologies. Like you can imagine actually sending out like probes out there to be able to sort of almost have little finger sensors throughout our solar yeah. system to be able to detect stuff. Well, that's right. Yeah, monitoring the asteroid belt is very important. And 99% of the so-called near-Earth objects ultimately come from the asteroid belt. And so there we can track the trajectories. And even if there's you know, a close encounter between two asteroids which deflects one of them toward Earth, it's unlikely to be on a collision course with Earth in the immediate future. It's more like you know tens of years. So that gives us time. But we would need to improve our ability to detect the objects that come in from a great distance. And fortunately, those are, are much rarer. The, the comets come in, you know, 1% of the collisions perhaps are with comets that come in without any warning, hardly. Mm -hmm. And so, so that might be more like, you know, a, a billion or two billion years before one of those hits us. 